Hey, what is going on guys? Rudal Null here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, now, in this video we're going to be taking a look at loops, and this is kind of our introduction to loops in this series, and uh, normally in a lot of other programming languages or scripting languages you would see things like a while loop, or a for loop, or a do while loop, or a do until loop, and that sort of thing. Uh, really the only one I know that Batch has support for though is the for loop, but with a little bit of go to and label magic we can sort of like mimic or recreate a while loop that we would normally be able to have in a whole other language. So I want to be able to show you guys this effect today, and uh, we'll look at some of the other loops in a different video. But in all honesty, a loop is a system or a process that does exactly what it sounds like. It, all it does is it loops. It'll do the same thing over and over and over again, but while it's doing it, you can still test for variables, and you can still understand logic, and you can still try to get something accomplished that you wouldn't be able to do normally, but it also kind of saves you some code. So uh, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'll get Notepad++ ready. Let's get the Windows command line ready as well. And let's create a new script. Call mine script.bat. And we're going to want add echo off as always. And now remember we have a new thing to type here, if you remember the last video, delayed variable expansion. Before we go to the main, we're going to set local, and our argument can be enable delayed expansion. And that's all one word. Okay, now we can go to our main function. Now we can go ahead and create our main function. Make sure we set local and end local in there, and then we can go to the end of the file or end of the function. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to create some variables to have you guys visualize this a little bit better. I'll go ahead and call mine uh, counter, for one thing. And that's just going to be an integer, so I'll use our dash a tag for the set command. And that can start off at zero. And now I'll create another one for limit. Go zero. Actually, we'll want that to be ten. Okay. Now, normally, in another programming language, um, you would have a program or a function or a script or whatever you'd like to have it and the syntax for your while loop would just be the keyword while and then within in parentheses not usually or I guess it could be any anyway you'd have your condition and uh, at least in like C++ you could do this in Python you wouldn't need these parentheses but I prefer to have them and things like that but you'd have your condition immediately following your while loop and then while like counter is less than limit I'll look like I'm in Python for a moment you could have it uh, add something to counter, add one, and then go ahead and echo out the value of counter, and that sort of thing. If I were in Python, this would be print, but... So then you'd have a while loop, and it would do this uh, ten times, because it's going to keep going until it's less than ten, and it'll do it over and over and over again. Now in batch, it doesn't have support for this while loop, so we kind of have to make it all by ourselves. If we create a loop, we'll create a, a label, and we'll call it loop, so we'll be able to understand it and be able to recognize it a little bit easier. Inside of the loop, we can have an if statement, and that is what's going to test for the condition that we would normally have in a while loop. If we do counter, and remember we're going to want the value of counter, and remember if we're using delayed variable expansion, we have the option of using these exclamation points instead of the uh, set of the percent signs for our values, and we can use our comparison operator, LSS, for less than, I'll counter is less than limit, a code block or a little group, a compound statement, whatever you'd like to call it. And then all we can do is set the counter, our counter variable to be a value of counter plus one. We can echo out the value of counter. And actually, I think I'll do this right before we change the value. And then once we're at the end of it, we're going to want to continue with our loop. Because this is only going to happen one time if we don't tell it to go back to the loop. So we actually need a go to command here. And it'll go to the loop. So it'll, it'll run through this. If it's less than 10, it'll add one to it and it'll go back to the loop. It'll do it again and again and again and again and again. It'll still use the values that we've obviously changed. So 0 is less than 10, add 1, go back. 1 is less than 10, add 1, go back. 2 is less than 10, add 1, go back, and it'll keep doing this until it's up to 10, or that limit that we created here. We can keep looping over and over and over again. So if we echoed out a new line and then outside of loop, 
and we can use the uh, the escaped ex exclamation point so you guys have a little bit of review from the last video. And if we go ahead and ran this, if I run script, it'll say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we're outside of loop. Uh, and I should change this to go to, sorry, had an error there, and then we're outside the loop. So we do this over and over and over again, but remember we're still adding on to uh, the counter variable. It's going to equal 10 by the end of this. If we actually echoed out, counter is now, and the value counter, counter is now 10 because we've added on to it, and that's why our, our, uh, our condition actually fails here, because 10 is not less than 10, it's, it's equal to 10. So it'll break out of the loop and it won't do this again. And then it'll continue with the rest of the code. So this go-to syntax, sort of with the label, is going to allow us to create a loop that we would normally be able to use in another language with a pretty much, with a little bit of an easier syntax, but we can still accomplish the same thing. Uh, usually while loops don't have to be counting with variables, uh, normally you'd be using a for loop for that in another language. I still have to take a look at it for for loops in batch. But for now, you guys can use this example and see what you can do. You can very easily and quickly manipulate variables to count and go as many, do as many things as you'd like. So uh, thank you guys for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll be able to use this somewhere in your code. Usually loops are very helpful if you just want to, if you just want to do things over and over and over again. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.